if you're stuck for ideas on how to make the text on your thumbnails look good for your video, this video is going to teach you three different thumbnails text effects that you can use across any of the thumbnails that you like. As always, guys, if you do enjoy the video or learn anything new, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video for more videos like this one every single week. Without keeping you any longer, let's get straight into the video. So as always, guys, you want to open up Photoshop and you want to come to new file and you want to make sure just to make sure that you're getting the text effects look the exact same way as mine because otherwise if you do it on a different resolution canvas it will scale the effects slightly differently like if you're on a bigger canvas the effects will look smaller around the edges and stuff so we're going to go on a 1920 by 1080 pixel canvas 300 resolution i mean this is what this is what you should be designing your thumbnails on anyway this is what i designed my thumbnails on to get that nice high quality and then you export it as 720p you're going to type whatever your text wants to be i'm just going to go and write text effect i'm going to make that whatever color the color doesn't matter because we're going to change this all anyway basically get your text roughly set up on your thumbnail now however you want it the font i'm using is called asphalt you can activate it on adobe fonts if you want to use the exact same things that i'm doing so what you're going to want to do is come over to where it says text effect in our in our layers panel you're going to double click that layer this panel here is pretty much key for making near enough every single layer effect that we're going to do in today's video bar one because we're going to work with some 3d we're going to start off with one that i like to often use across a lot of my thumbnails so we're going to come down to color overlay i'm going to click on the color i'm just going to change that to bright red right in the right hand corner or it can be any color you want but for this effect that I particularly like using. I like to do red because it stands out nice on a the thumbnail. Then you want to come to inner shadow. Again, we want to change the color to red, but we're going to make it slightly darker red than we've already got and turn the distance up a little bit. And let's put it at a little bit of an angle. Now, some fonts like this one doesn't really work because as you can see, it like it kind of prints another version of the text in itself. So like you get like the corners overlapping, which doesn't look great. Play around with your inner shadow and you can kind of angle it. Make sure the choke's on 100 and the size is on zero. Once you've done that, come down to drop shadow. And what we're going to do is turn the spread all the way up to 100 we're going to turn the size up a little bit and the distance up a little bit just so that it's not completely flat stroke like that so you've got a little bit of an angle to it so you want it to be thinner on the top than it is on the bottom then what you want to do is change the color to white then we're going to add another drop shadow and we're going to do the same but we're going to make it in a light gray and with this one you want to bring down the size a little bit so that the edges line up with the edge of the white kind of drop shadow we've got going on turn the distance up a little bit so it gives it that kind of like 3d popping out sort of effect and there you have it there you've got this kind of red fun text effect that you can use on arrows or text for your thumbnails yeah that is the first effect of the video so let's move on to the next one make sure before you start doing this one you have your text positioned on your canvas exactly as you want it so don't do this and then go and start moving it about and putting it as you want it figure out how you want your text to look roughly on your thumbnails whether it's just like in the corner up here or if you want it down here like center at the bottom just make sure you have it wherever you want it on your canvas and however you want it set in stone then what you want to do is double click on the layer styles to get the layer styles panel come up and then we're going to click gradient overlay and we're just going to make this nice kind of gold gradient i like my gold gradients to kind of be a bit more orangey as opposed to like bright yellow green i'm going to go with something roughly like this then once we're happy with that we're going to come up to bevel and emboss now you want to set your bevel to inner bevel chisel hard you want your depth to be around something that gives this kind of effect because obviously the size will be different depending on what size your text is and what font you've chosen all that kind of stuff so something around 300 worked for me with a text this size direction up although you can mess around with it down if you want the glow to look like the lights coming from underneath it but i personally prefer it with it on top turn the size up i've got a size on 16 if you want to copy the exact numbers that i've got then if we come down to here you want to make sure it's set to linear dodge add we've got a nice kind of light yellow color here again you can pause the video and copy the hex codes if you want the exact colors then with our shadow we've got it set to multiply 75 percent opacity and this kind of orangey brown color down here so then once we're happy with the bevel and emboss you want to come down to drop shadow you want to set the color to black you want to turn the distance all the way down opacity all the way up make sure it's set on normal blending mode the spread on 100 and the size you just want it to kind of you can choose how kind of chunky you like the stroke on yours i've got mine set to 24 pixels like that and then we're going to click ok on the layer styles and then we're going to hit ctrl g to group the layer we're going to open up the layer styles panel by double clicking then we're going to click outer glow and you can't really see it because i'm on a white background right now but when you're on a different colored background and i'll show you with like a sky background after you'll see this creates like a nice glow effect so as you can see we've now got our sky background in the background of our thumbnail and you can turn up the opacity and play around with it just as much as you like when you're on linear dodge add one Thing to note is actually sometimes making the color darker will give you like a more subtle but like kind of tinted like saturated glow effect some colors don't work too well like yellow on a blue doesn't necessarily work so well so say if you've got a more blue background you might want to change your outer glow 
to a darker blue or something like that to give it a nicer glow. Once you're happy with that, what you can do is create a new layer. Hit I on your keyboard to get the eyedropper tool. Pick a color from the gold on your, your text effect. Make sure the layer isn't in the group with the text that layer styles on because otherwise it will be applied to this as well. Just create two soft brush dots like this somewhere on your text. Hit linear dodge add. And then if you can clip and mask it to your text and you can create this nice kind of glow effect across part of it and you can play around with different shapes and stretching it out and whatnot. And you can play around with the hue and stuff of it, make it more orange, like something like this, if that's something you'd wish. And yeah, that is pretty much our second text effect for the video. And now we're going to move on over into Adobe Illustrator for our third text effect, because that's how we're going to create a nice 3D text effect. OK, so now we're over in Adobe Illustrator, what we're going to do is I'm just going to use the word text for this effect as we're going to do some 3D. And while I'm recording, it might kill my computer. So I want to keep it as simple as possible. We're actually going to duplicate this text. So we've got, got it somewhere else as backup because we're going to use two kind of layers to make this effect. Then what we want to do is make this completely white, make the stroke white, turn up the stroke to something like 40. Then you're going to object, expand, objects and fill to so something like this. Then if we move this off the canvas here and we do object expand again, basically we turn, we've turned our text into shapes. I'm going to go to window pathfinder and we're going to click this one here which is like two kind of blobs to merge this all into one big shape then what we're going to want to do is actually we're going to keep it off the canvas so we can see what we're doing is actually going to come up to here where it says 3d and material i'm going to click extrude and now as you can see this has made it into like a 3d object and you can actually control the 3d rotation and stuff of this i'm going to set my x y and z to these values right here i've just literally done that off of the top of my head whilst doing this video so if you want to pause the video and get these exact same values to get the same effect or you can mess around with it and get your own it doesn't really matter what these are set to as long as you're happy with it and then we're going to click on the depth and we're just going to make it a little bit thicker not too much it was set to 50 by default i like something like 76 you can make it beveled if you wish so you can make the, the corners a little bit more rounded however i i like it without the bevel i'm going to keep it clean just flat kind of boxy text so then once we're happy with this this is going to act as kind of like a 3d sort of stroke so we're going to come up to the top text we're going to click object expand and OK. Now these are shaped. I'm going to click extrude and we're going to copy these values here. So we've got 38 and 30. Then what we're going to do is take this text and we're just going to put it on top of our other text now. Now it will take a little bit of judging this by eye to get it perfect. And I'm also going to change the color just to any sort of color that we want. Already this looks great, but what you can also do is come up to the top here. I can't do it now because I'm recording and this will literally kill my computer if I try and ray trace whilst I'm recording. But this little button here is actually like rendering it. So if you use Blender and you do 3D text in there, you can also do that in within After Effects. You can render out with ray tracing. Although these are grayed out for you, for me, they won't be for you. So what you would do is you'd click the quality on high, depending on your PC. If you've got a lesser, if you've got a less powerful PC, I'd keep this on low. I turn off reduce noise and I do render as vector. Click that toggle button. Make sure you've toggled it on both of the layers and click render. Once you've rendered it out, what you do is hit command C and then you just open up Photoshop and you just paste it onto your thumbnail, which I'm going to do for you guys now. So now we're in Photoshop. I'm just going to hit control V to paste. And now you can choose any of these. I like to do smart objects, but you can do pixels, path, shape layer, whatever you want to do. And here you are. You've now got this 3D text effect within Photoshop that you can edit and do whatever you want to. And it will look a lot nicer because you would have 3D rendered it with ray tracing and whatever from After Effects, uh, from Illustrator, sorry. So that was it for today's video, guys. I really hope you did enjoy and learn something new, especially that last little 3D text effect in Illustrator. I've only learned about that myself recently, so I thought I just had to share it with you guys. If you guys did enjoy it or learn anything new, please don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on the video. And also don't forget to join my Discord. That'll be in the top link of the description below. But yeah, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.